Praise the Lord. In the book of John, chapter 14, verses 13 and verse 14, that is written, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14, If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. This is the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has promised that he will do it. Do what? Whatsoever ye shall ask. What is this for? It's for whatsoever you ask. Who is it for? It's for ye. That word in the Holy Bible, ye, Y-E, means you, all of you, including me, including you. That whatsoever we shall ask in his name, whose name? The name of Jesus Christ. That will he do. For what reason? That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Jesus Christ says, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he continues to do it. I've believed the Lord Jesus Christ since 1995 when I was born again. And for the past 19 years, as it is now 2014, I have seen him do it, doing whatsoever we ask in his name. For what reason? That the Father may be glorified in the Son. You see, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That whosoever includes you, that whosoever includes me, whosoever believeth in him, believeth in who? Jesus Christ, the Son of God, hath everlasting life. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 36, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Believing on the Son of God, Jesus Christ, God has promised that you can have life, everlasting life. You see, there are people in the world today that claim to believe in Jesus, but do not believe he is the Son of God. And the Bible says that if we do not believe on the Son of God, we shall not see life. You see, the Bible says, these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life on his name. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. But there are people today that they claim to believe in Jesus, but do not believe he's the Son of God. In fact, they will openly reject that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And in doing so, the Bible says, they shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on them. One such group of people are the many Mohammedans in the world today, or who you may call Muslims. You see, they, they claim to believe in Jesus Christ. They, they call him Jesus Christ. They even believe that he was a prophet, yet they do not believe He's the Son of God. And what does the Bible say? If we do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, ye shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on you. Back in 2003, now it's 2014, that's 11 years ago. It's amazing how fast time flies. It feels like it was just yesterday, but back in 2003, Three, in preaching these scriptures and in demonstrating these scriptures, I saw a Mohammedan man, a Muslim man, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You see, Jesus Christ says that if you shall ask anything in his name, he will do it. And why does he do it? Why does he answer our prayer? So that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Jesus Christ can prove 
to you today. He is the Son of God. If you would ask God whatsoever in the name of Jesus Christ, he has promised he will do it. And he does it for this reason, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Back in 2003, I was preaching the gospel in different churches on Sunday, or what Christians call the Lord's Day, the first day of the week. And what I would do was, the day before I'd preach in the churches, which would be Saturday, I would take a team out into their neighborhoods to preach the gospel, because I am an evangelist since I was born again. The Lord has gifted and called me to do the work of an evangelist. What's an evangelist? It is a preacher of the gospel. And I've been preaching the gospel since I was born again back in 1995. And as I was preaching the word of God in this church on Saturday, the day before the church service, I would take a team out and we'd go out to their neighborhoods and preach the gospel. Being that it was a Saturday and many people are not working on that day, we went out in the morning time. And as we preached the gospel out there in that neighborhood, and it was a a, a slum area, what they would call in, Thailand, in Bangkok, a, a slum area, it was a, a poor area of town, and we went preaching the gospel, giving out gospel tracts in that poor area of town. Before 12 o'clock, we're gonna head back to the church and eat dinner, uh, eat lunch there at 12 o'clock, and before that time, we stopped at a little shop to get some drinks. You see, we've been preaching the gospel all morning long. And so we wanted some water and some soda pop. There was a few of us together, including the pastor of the church. And we, we stopped by this little mom and pop shop there in the neighborhood. We've been preaching the gospel to get some drinks, some soda pop and some water. And while we're getting those drinks, a man who had seen me preaching, he came up to me to challenge me to a debate. Now, at that time, 2003, I, I did not have a beard yet, and I was wearing a necktie. Now I'm wearing Mandarin collar shirts. No, these are not Catholic priest shirts. These are Asian style shirts. They're called the Mandarin collar. But back in those days, I was wearing a, a Western collar shirt and had a necktie on. And I did not have my beard at the time, so I, I look like a Western man, more so than I do now. I'm half Western and half Vietnamese by the time I was wearing a shirt with a Western collar and a Western necktie, and I had the Bible, and I'd been preaching the gospel, so everybody knew that saw me that I was a Christian. Of course, you can tell by this book that I'm a Christian. You can tell by the way I was dressed I was a Christian, and on top of it, I was preaching the gospel as well. And this, this man that came to debate with me, he was a Burmese man. He was darker skin. He had a, a long beard, and he was wearing a tank top, and he was wearing a salong. What's a salong? It's a a nice way of saying a, a dress. He was wearing a, a dress, a kind of a, a long skirt. It was a green color skirt that Mohammedans or Muslims are known for wearing. He had a hat on his head, but the hat did not have a visor. It was not a hat to block the sun. It was a square hat that only Mohammedans wear or a Muslim would wear. And he, he came up and approached me and he had a book in his hand. Now you look at the book in my hand, you know what it is. Black cover like this, leather back gold leaf plate pages, of course, you know, anybody knows, this is the Holy Bible, the authorized version of the Holy Bible. And in that Burmese man's hand, he had a, a green book, which he claimed was the Quran. Now, I, do not, I did not look at it myself. I did not look through his book. I do not know what language it was in. You see, Mohammedans, they believe if, if the Quran is not in the Arabic language, it's not the Quran. So I did not know what language the Quran was he had in his hand, but he claimed it was the Quran. And he came up to me while I was drinking my soda pop. He waited till I finished preaching and we're at this little shop drinking soda pop. And he came up to me to say, mm, the Quran says Jesus is not the son of God. Well, I put my soda pop down. I told him with my Bible in my hands, the Bible says that Jesus is the son of God. And I quoted John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When we began going through this, he and I, the pastor of that church, he was an older man, and we had been preaching the gospel all morning long, and 
he now had to use the bathroom. So he left the area and went looking for a toilet in that slum neighborhood, asking around for a toilet, and he went away. And me and this Burmese guy were going at it. He was telling me with the, what he said was the Quran in his hand that Jesus is not the Son of God. And I was telling him with the Bible, man, that Jesus is the Son of God. Now, I'm not Thai, though I've lived here for 23 years. I'm half Thai and ha I'm half Vietnamese. <laughs> I just said I'm not Thai and then I said I'm half Thai. I'm half Vietnamese and half American, white American on my father's side and Vietnamese on my mother's side. And though I've lived in Thailand for 23 years and I speak the language and I've been doing so for the past 23 years and I even read it and he can write the Thai language, my Thai is not 100% clear. When I speak Thai, you can still tell that it's a, a foreign tongue to me. It's, it's a second language, it's not my first language. English, of course, is my first language. This Burmese man, I don't know how long he'd been living in Thailand, but he spoke Thai, and we were talking in the Thai tongue together, but being that he was Burmese, his Thai was not clear either. In fact, I don't know who spoke worse Thai, him or I, but we're communicating in this, our second language in Thai. I am telling him in Thai, with the Bible in my hand, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is telling me in Thai, with a Burmese accent, with the Quran in his hand, or what he claimed was the Quran, that Jesus is not the Son of God. In Thailand, the national sport here is prize fighting. They love their prize fighting. It comes on television, especially on Saturdays and Sundays when people are off of work, and the free television, the non-cable TV, they will put on prize fights. In prize fighting in Thailand, they'll use their fists, gloves, glove fists, elbows, knees, kicks, and they'll kick any part of the body except for the growing. And the people love that sport here in Thailand. It's their national sport of prize fighting. And at the end of the month, and it happened to be end of the month at that day, Saturday, the best fighters will fight because prize fighting the world over, not just here in Thailand, but the whole world, is controlled by gambling. If there was no gambling, there would be no prize fighting. And the best fighters fight at the end of the month when everybody gets their monthly wages. So that way they can gamble their monthly wages and people get so addicted to gambling, sad to say, that they'll actually gamble their monthly wages away over a prize fight. And so while this Burmese guy and myself were going at it, a whole group of men a few shops down from where we were, were gathered around a television watching the prize fights on TV and they, they really get into the prize fighting here in Thailand. They will shout, they will scream out loud if if you're living here in Thailand and it's a Saturday or Sunday, you'll know when the prize fights are on TV because you hear all the yelling and the screaming going on. And if it's a big prize fight, such as what happened many years ago, the streets of Bangkok that is normally filled with traffic will actually empty out as people gather on the television screens to watch the prize fights. They gamble their whole monthly wages on these fights. So as you can tell, they're really into their prize fighting. However, this Burmese guy and myself, I a Christian, dressed like a Christian, look like a Christian, he a Mohammedan, dressed like a Mohammedan, looking like a Mohammedan, going at it, calls these men who are gambling their monthly wages on prize fights to ignore the prize fighting on TV, turn their backs to the television to watch us. now. If you've ever been to Thailand or if you've ever been to Bangkok when they're watching prize fighting and to see something happen, you know this is a big miracle. After we are going through that Jesus is a son of God and from the Bible's view and he was saying Jesus is not the son of God from the Quran's view, he also said to me, Jesus did not die on the cross. You see the Quran, the by the Quran, they, the Mohammedans do not believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. In fact, they believe it was Judas Iscariot, the betrayer of Jesus Christ. Of course, the Bible says that Jesus Christ died on the cross. In fact, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says how that Christ 
died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. In 1 Peter, it is written that his own self, Jesus Christ, his own self, bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were healed. It is a very important part of the Bible that Jesus Christ died on the cross. In fact, it is the gospel of Christ that Christ died for our sins. According to the scriptures, he was buried and he rose again from the dead on the third day, according to the scriptures. This is the gospel of Christ. Romans chapter one, verse 16 says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. This is the gospel. In fact, this is why we have the Bible with us today. The word of God says, and the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. The gospel is a major theme of the Bible, that Christ died for our sins. So when this Mohammedan says to me that the Quran says that Jesus did not die on the cross, I answer back that the Bible says Jesus did die on the cross and he died for our sins. I notice the crowd that gathered around us, especially those men who are watching the prize fighting and many other people. It was a Saturday, they had nothing else better to do, and a, a crowd gathered around us. And as this crowd was gathering around us, I decided to, to throw a little humor in there, and I told the Mohammedan man that, the, according to the Bible, we can know we have eternal life. You see, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. You see, according to the Bible, we can know we have eternal life. We can know where we are going when we die. And I told that Mohammedan man that by the Bible, I know I'm going to heaven when I die. And I began singing a Christian hymn of the faith hymn in the Thai tongue. The hymn is called, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. And I began singing to that to him in the Thai tongue. That says, when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When I began singing that in the Thai tongue, he began doing some kind of Mohammedan chant in the Arabic tongue, and of course I was singing in the major keys, the happy key. I was trying just now to sing in the key of C, and you know, I sing in the major keys. He began singing in those minor keys that Mohammedans do their chanting. So when I was doing that singing, he was doing his chanting, that loud screaming in the minor keys. Well, at this time, the Thai pastor of that church I was preaching the next day, he came back from the toilet, came back on the scene. There was a crowd gathered around. I'm singing in the major keys, a, a hymn of the Christian faith. This Mohammedan is doing a Mohammedan chant in the Arabic tongue in the minor keys. A crowd is gathered around us, and that pastor just cuts in between us. You see, when that pastor went to use the bathroom, he had passed a room whose door was open. It was a slum area and people live in small little rooms. And he noticed in that room, there was this lady that he thought could have been a corpse. He thought it may have been a, a dead lady on the bed. And he wanted to pray for this lady, not sure if she was even alive or not. And he was so concerned about that lady that he did not see the crowd gathered around us. He did not see myself, the Mohammedan, having a singing contest. He came straight between us, asked that Burmese Mohammedan if he knew of this lady who was laying in this bed, it looks like she's dead. The Mohammedan cleared, straightened up, stopped singing. He put his Quran on the table, at the table at this shop where they had a little table, people put their drinks and stuff. And he told us the story that 
he and his brother are taking care of this lady. He says, that's hi, lady, she has AIDS. And the family had kicked her out of the house to the streets to die. And back in 2003, the local population didn't really have access to the AIDS medicine that they have today. And she was left to die on the streets and these two Mohammedans, being that they came from a very hard country back in 2003, Burma was a very hard place to live and they knew what it's like to struggle. They knew it's like to not be, not have a place to live. They took her into their small little room to take care of her. And we told this Mohammedan man that we would like to go and pray for her. Well, he, he said, come, please, please pray for her. You see, Mohammedans, they don't do things like that. They don't pray for the sick. But the Bible tells us, Jesus Christ says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. They shall take up serpents. They shall lay their hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Not might, not could, they shall recover. And Mohammedans, they don't have a promise like that in the Quran. In fact, that Mohammedan put his Quran down the table and started leading us to this room that he was staying in where this lady was. As we're walking to their room, another man shows up without wearing a shirt. He had tied strings around his biceps and put his guard up in a boxing stance, ready to box with me, you see. It was that man's brother. And while he saw us having this debate, he went and got ready, tied those strings with bicep to come to beat me up and to fight me. But his brother, who was leading us to the room, explained to him in the Burmese tongue, I believe he was saying that they're gonna go pray for that lady. And he automatically straightened up, put his hands down, and they directed us to this room. And it was a very small room it had just enough room for a small single bed and a little bit of a walkway. And these two Burmese men had sacrificed their bed they're sleeping on to sleep on the floor, to let her, this woman dying of AIDS, sleep on their bed. There was no window in the room, it's just one door. There's no toilet, they share a toilet down the hallway, just a small little stinky room that these two Mohammedan brothers from Burma allowed this tiny dine of age to sleep on their bed. As we entered into that small room, the smell hit us in the face. Not only was it very hot, not only was it very close, it was very smelly. And there was this woman laying on the bed and she looked like a corpse. In fact, she looked like a skeleton laying there. She was that skinny and very smelly and laying on the bed. And we did not know if this was a corpse or not. The two Burmese men, because the room was so small, they were not able to come inside with us. They stood outside at the door while this pastor myself entered into the room to pray for this lady. We knelt down by her bed. I looked at that pastor, he looked at me. We didn't say anything to each other, but we wanted to confirm we were in agreement. You see in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, Jesus Christ says, again I say unto you that if two of you on this earth shall agree as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. We had to make sure we were in agreement. This looked like a corpse on the bed. We are getting ready to pray for her with these two Mohammedan men watching us. So as we confirm with our eyes that we're going to pray. We're in agreement. I put my hands on her head as Jesus Christ says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And as I put my hands upon her head, her head was burning hot with a fever. I've never felt somebody with such a high fever before, but that told me she was alive. Praise the Lord. We didn't have to raise somebody from the dead. She was alive and we began praying for her. Now I, I did not say these prayers of doubt of Lord, if it be thy will. No, it wasn't a prayer like that. The Bible says that the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. We didn't pray half-hearted prayers. We didn't whisper a prayer of doubt to God. We prayed the prayer of faith in the name of Jesus Christ. And as we prayed for her, her eyes suddenly opened and she wanted to sit up. So myself and the pastor, we helped sit her up. 
while we were sitting her up in this bed, the two Burmese Muhammad is standing at the doorway of this room began crying. We found out later she had been bedridden for two weeks. According to them, she had been in that bed for two weeks. No wonder it smelled so bad. And they thought she was gonna die this way. They had lost all hope that she would ever sit up on her own. And here she was now after we prayed sitting up and it caused these two men to begin to cry. They were witnessing a miracle. Now the pastor and I, we did not know at the time she was bedridden. So as she sat up, we began preaching the gospel to her. Jesus Christ says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. You see, normally we preach first, then the signs follow. Mark chapter 16, verse 20, it is written, and they, the apostles, went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Normally, we preach first and God works with us and confirms his word with signs following. But at this particular day, the sign came first. We did not really realize it. At the time we prayed for her, she set up and then we began preaching the gospel to her. She put her hands up in the air like ties will do and closed her eyes and tears sort of streaming down her face as we preach that God commendeth his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We preach her that greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down this life for his friends. We preach the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ to this woman. And she was crying. She'd been kicked out of her home. She was dying of AIDS. She was condemned by men to die. And now she got to hear that God loved her, that God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. For God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And God is willing for all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And we gave her the promise that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. As she listened to us preach the gospel and, and shed many tears that, that God would still love her in the sorry state that she was in as she was dying of AIDS and kicked out of her own house and these Burmese men, these illegal immigrants here in Thailand were the ones taking care of her. She was shedding these tears and we, we told her the promise that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And, and she wanted to call upon that name, the name of Jesus Christ to be saved. And so we, we prayed with her. And when we finished praying with her, and she called on the name of Jesus Christ to be saved, and she got saved. It's so simple if you just believe, believe the gospel and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and call upon his name, he shall be saved. And as she called on the name and got saved, her, her countenance changed. Now she was still sick. She was still in a bad physical state. However, she had a smile on her face and her eyes lit up. When somebody is born again, you know it. It is the greatest miracle ever for people to get born again. Jesus Christ says in John chapter 15, verse 12, John chapter 14, verse 12, that, that if we believe in Jesus Christ, we shall even do greater works than he did when he was on the earth. Greater works shall ye do also, because I go unto the Father. What are those greater, greater works? To see people get born again. It is the greatest miracle to see people come out of darkness into light, translated from the kingdom, from, from destruction, translated from death, translated from the power of darkness into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. She was born again. Her, she became a very beautiful woman, though she was in a bad physical state. And as I was looking, her eyes glowing and that smile on her face and rejoicing that she got born again, that Burmese man who had been debating with me grabbed me on the arm and said, 
I want what she has. What must I do? We preached the gospel with them as well, and they got down on their knees, and they called on Jesus, the Son of God, to save them as well. Well, a few days later, we gave that Burmese man and his brother a Burmese Bible. We gave the, the Thai woman a Thai Bible. And then the next week, that was a Saturday. So the next Saturday, we paid them a visit after giving them the Bible. And then we paid them a visit. When we came to the room, it was clean now. It smelled better because that woman who was dying of AIDS, though she may not have been healed of the AIDS itself, she was doing a lot better and she was up. She was cleaning, she was walking around, she was eating, and in that week's time, she'd gain weight. And if you're down the bones, skin and bones, and you start eating, you can really tell. And she started putting some weight on just in one week's time and was cleaning the room. And the Burmese man told me the story that the day before, because it was a Saturday now, he, he went to the mosque, because they go to mosque on Fridays. And he took that Burmese Bible we gave him, and he told all of his Mohammedan brethren there at the mosque, what Jesus did and he confessed to them that he believes now that Jesus is the Son of God because in John 14 13 and he said he opened the Bible and read it to those there in that mosque John 14 13 that whatsoever he shall ask my name Jesus Christ says that will I also do that the Father may be glorified in the Son and he told them the story of what happened and that he now believes that Jesus is the Son of God while well, they they kicked him out of the mosque but he was happy anyway, though he was kicked out of the mosque, because now he knows Jesus is the Son of God. Now he knows he has eternal life. But the Bible promises us that these are written unto ye that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Do you know where you're going when you die? Do you know if you have eternal life or not? Have you been born again. The Bible says that the Spirit of God beareth witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. When a person is born again, they know it. Not here in the head knowledge, in the Spirit. They know they're a child of God. You see, back in 1995 when I was born again, God's Spirit bore witness with my spirit that I am now a child of God. I can rejoice I can be happy. I have a clear conscience because I know when I die, I'm going to heaven, that I have eternal life. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Once again, the Bible is written, it has been preserved for us. God has preserved his pure words for us, Jesus Christ says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall be forever. God has preserved his pure words for us for this reason. And these are written, God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth has put his word in a book, had it written by over 40 men. And these are written for a reason that ye, you and me, that ye, might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing he might have life through his name. For neither is there salvation than any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And whatsoever he shall ask in his name, Jesus Christ says that he will also do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, and Christ promises, If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. He will do it for you. Call on the name of Jesus Christ. Pray to God in that name the name of Jesus Christ, and he will do it. God bless you. I'm praying for you, praying for you to be saved, praying that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and receive this gift of eternal life. God bless you.